Hi there and welcome back. So in continuation with the endocrine system, let's make an attempt to look at the pituitary dwarfism. So simply speaking, dwarfism is growth hormone deficiency. It could be proportionate, it could be disproportionate. So what happens is, a pituitary gland does not produce sufficient amount of growth hormone, period. And as a result, we see this uh, pituitary dwarfism. And there are some literature out there that defines for the adult um, average height of 4 feet and 10 inch or less. Um, the dwarfism is not the right word. It should be respected and, and it should be stated as short stature or little person Okay, so that's out there and uh, it may lead to uh, different medical conditions or actually due to. So for example, you have a disproportionate dwarfism and as the word suggests, the condition is characterized by having a disproportionate parts of the body. Okay. So you could have any one of these. Achondroplasia is a fancy name. <coughs> Basically, it boils down to genetic bone growth disorder characterized by short stature with short limbs and normal size torso. So some of the things are normal, some of the things are not normal. And that's why they label it as dispro disproportionate. So it could be any of those things, either head or uh, other parts of the body, okay? But it does impair the normal uh, bone development. In the proportionate dwarfism, as the word suggests, it means that there is a proportionate head, limbs and trunk, but they are usually smaller than compared to the average size people because we are talking about a uh, deficiency here. And uh, of course, in the childhood, um, through proper injections, uh, hormone can be administered to try to remedy the situation. And uh, signs and symptoms are obvious, but let's talk about the disproportionate. So, disproportionate dwarfism what happens is <clears throat> there could be some secondary factors also. For example, we have reviewed uh, at one point in the past about the hydrocephalus. That is what? That is the uh, excessive fluid accumulation in the brain. Okay. But the good news is this that people with disproportionate dwarfism often have a normal intellectual functioning in general unless you have some additional uh, disorders like hydrocephalus. Achondroplasia is a disorder that causes disproportionate dwarfism, okay? And there are the uh, criteria or the benchmarks, you could say, and it is basically disproportionate. That's the, that's the whole thing. You can see that overall, we are dealing with disproportionate uh, human outlook. Another fancy name in the medical literature we see is about um, SEDC is a rare genetic bone growth disorder and another cause of disproportionate dwarfism. And again, the benchmarks are certain height and weight and because it is disproportionate so some of the things are compared to average person okay and some of the things are not okay and the symptoms could include any of this so I'm not going to read all this
if we are talking about proportionate dwarfism, then the body does produce the hormone, but it's below the needed or the required normal level, but they are proportionate. So in the childhood, it would limit the overall growth bottom line period. So their head, limbs, trunk are small, but proportionate to each other. So some of the things I am skipping here and we'll get into the uh, diagnosis. So your doctor will look at the physical appearance, height and weight measurements, and what is normal, what is abnormal, whether proportionate or disproportionate. Your doctor will also look at the family history to see what is causing, are there any genetic factors. Uh, dealing with endocrine, so of course, hormone test, a surplus deficiency, how excessive or how deficient the hormones are, uh, genetic test, and of course, test needed, the imaging test, MRI, X-ray, uh, to fine tune the right course of treatment and see what can be done. As far as treatment goes, the focus is not to get rid of the dwarfism, but to minimize the damage that it brings. So, they are often used to correct and relieve the problems caused by certain complications and not mainly to increase the stature. Okay? So, surgery, hormone therapy are obviously there. Uh, limb lengthening involves multiple procedures and there is um, risk involved. Um, it gets too stressful emotionally speaking and uh, the consent of the adult is required uh, to see if it works and it is done in rare cases. The good news is this that overall outlook is good, pituitary dwarfism does not affect a person's ability to enjoy the things in their life. Uh, they can have a family, they can have a career, they can have a long and fulfilling life. Okay, but it, there may be some complications that may happen. So time to time routine visits with the doctor is needed to um, take control over this unfortunate dwarfism. Okay, so let's take a quick break and see you soon.